Super Wild Card Weekend wraps up Monday night in Los Angeles as the Rams host the Cardinals in the only matchup of teams with 11 or more wins. Now, despite the matchup being between the 12-win Rams and 11-win Cardinals, both teams enter on a sour note. The Rams lost to the Niners in Week 18, dropping them from a two-seed to the four-spot, while the Cardinals squandered a chance to steal the NFC West by losing to the Seahawks. And quite frankly, Arizona hasn't been the same since they lost their star wideout DeAndre Hopkins. They've lost four of five heading into the playoffs, including a home loss to the Rams, who they split with in the regular season. This is your one and done if you don't win. I think the guys understand that. And for L.A., it has been Super Bowl or bust since bringing in Von Miller and Odell Beckham Jr. This will likely be their only home game of the postseason unless they can make it all the way to the Super Bowl. But first things first, they must contain Kyler and the cards. Looking forward to responding with these guys the right way and what we know is going to be a great atmosphere and a really tough game on Monday night against the Cardinals in the playoffs. Here we go. It's an NFC West showdown at SoFi. Can the Cardinals regain their early season form, or will Matthew Stafford win his very first playoff game? And joining us now from the field, Josina Anderson, along with uh, Brady Quinn and Danny Cannell with me. I'm Chris Hassel. Josina, uh, Cardinals getting a big reinforcement back tonight. J.J. Watt, all those shoulder and chest injuries that he had, they were thinking no way he'd be able to come back this season. How did he make his return and what kind of impact could he have tonight? <laughs> Well, first and foremost, he made that big announcement on Twitter with that Steven Spielberg type movie on his Twitter this morning, letting everybody know he was ready. But really, we talked about it even on Thursday on HQ, where I talked to a source around him who basically said they were expecting optimistic news. I know his agency has a suite in this stadium. Uh, agent is coming here today, so everybody was pretty much expecting this. But it is a valiant comeback from J.J. Watt, a player that we've come accustomed to making these valiant comebacks. Remember, he injured that left shoulder October 24th. He had surgery on it November 3rd, hasn't played a game in 12 weeks. And then he also was able to come back on the field, practice on Thursday. He said he was not going to come back out here if he felt like he was going to injure or hurt the team, but he was able to gradually get back to functional football exercises. And obviously, he wants to help this team. Remember, the Rams are excuse me, the Cardinals rather, are 7-0 and when he was participating with the defense. And so this is something that they're looking forward to as far as amplifying with his presence on the field out here today in a game that they have to have. <laughs> well, he should be licking his chops, too, for this opportunity to take on the L.A. Rams. I mean, for starters, this offense, no matter what we want to say about Matt Stafford and the passing attack, it still operates best off the outside zone running scheme. And the Cardinals defense is best when J.J. Watt was in there this season, helping to penetrate, create negative plays. And then you look at the last four games. The offensive line's given up 10 sacks, five their last game versus the San Francisco 49ers. So again, J.J. Watt's got to be excited about that opportunity. The defense should be excited about that too, D.K. And I'm, I'm sure Josina's going to see J.J. Watt somewhere out there running around shirtless, getting pumped up, ready to go for this one. Oh, yeah. He's going to be playing catch with some little kid in the stands. Never. He's going to be uh, <laughs> loving this moment for him, uh, soaking it all in. I mean, this was supposed to be out four to five months, and he cuts that time in half. My big thing is, like, how much are you going to get out of J.J. Watt? You know, and are you going to get 80% of him, 90%? And how many plays is he actually going to play? Because clearly he's not going to be full go the way he was in those, you know, weeks one through seven. But even getting 80% of J.J. Watt, I think, is impactful. And this is the type of year when – you do whatever you can just for that one shot to help your uh, team advance one more week. So there'll be a lot of eyes on J.J. Watt what type of production you get out of tonight. Even his presence, though, on the field, it needs something as far as just taking up attention, sometimes multiple blockers. So that's something to keep an eye out for, too. One more thing for Matthew Stafford to think about tonight. And Josina, all the pressure is on the Rams, and a lot of that pressure is on Matthew Stafford, who brings some baggage with him. That baggage includes zero postseason wins. 
Yeah, you know what? Their performance right now, as you mentioned, is predicated on the success of Matthew Stafford, particularly when you consider all of the resources that Les Need put into this moment. Uh, they traded Jared Goff. They gave up two first-round picks. So even though uh, he has had a really good performance this season with 41 touchdowns and 17 interceptions, at times he's shown some cracks under pressure. If you go back even to the last game where I was here against the 49ers, uh, even in overtime, he had six plays. Four of those were incompletions. That is not what they can have. He has to come out here determined, especially like how they played against this uh, Cardinals team week 14 when he had the three touchdowns, no turnovers, coming out determined, knowing that he was going to stay in the pocket to the last minute. When the pressure comes in, that is the type of uh, performance that they are looking from Matthew Stafford today. The other thing that I think is really interesting <laughs> is when we were watching him play last week, this is a quarterback that rarely scrambles. I believe he has 47 rush yards this entire season. I think it's second lowest just uh, to Ben Roethlisberger. There were times when we were sitting in the pe uh, press box and he had so much real estate in front of him and everybody was like, run! So the thing is, when he has that opportunity and it's not there and everybody is covered, I talked to people behind the scenes that wanted to uh, say to me, basically, for him to remember to use his feet and still scramble. He doesn't have to just stay in the pocket and obviously also to get his resources involved, like Odell Beckham Jr., who I know we're going to talk about as well. And he, he may have to scramble around for his life if his offensive line is going to play the way they did last week. Uh, <laughs> that entire group, besides Andrew Whitworth, were part of Pete Prisco's spinning top. All the old spinning top. Well, you give up five sacks, uh -huh. he's going to be a part of that. So, Jacina's right. He, he may have to move around and get pretty mobile if he wants to buy some time. And we're going to talk about some of their pass weapons and their options. The reality is, if you look at the last four or five games of the season and you compare his stats to Jared Goff, Jared Goff played better football down the stretch with less resources out around him. And I don't know if it's a matter of just Matthew Stafford feeling some of the pressure that comes along with being a team that was expected to be in the playoffs. So here you are now, a team that's expected to win the division with all the resources they put into this team. Or if it's just the fact that the offensive line was starting to fall apart in front of them. They haven't had a consistent run game throughout the entire season. They added Odell Beckham, but it takes time to develop that sort of chemistry with a wide receiver. Cooper Cup's really been the MVP and the most consistent part of this entire offense. So I think it's going to be curious to see how Stafford plays, especially if Vance Joseph can take away Cooper Cup within this offense. You know they're going to bracket him. You know they're going to try to put their best cornerback, defensive back on him at times when they want to isolate. But the reality is without Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford doesn't have as much to really rely on, probably not as much confidence in guys he's throwing to out around him, DK. No doubt about it. There's not a player in the playoffs this postseason with more pressure on him than Matthew Stafford. I mean, this move was made not even to win this playoff game. It was to win a Super Bowl because you mentioned Jared Goff. He got to the Super Bowl, came up just short. And Sean McVay, they said, and Les Snead, they said, nope, that's not good enough. We want somebody who's going to take us to the promised land and get us all the way home and win that Super Bowl trophy. And I don't know if I, I'm with you, uh, Brady. I don't know if it is because of the pressures getting to him, if he's trying to do too much. But it all started with that three-game losing streak. Because he was, it was, it was on. He was MVP candidate. They were off to the races. Things looked great. And then the interception started coming. And some of those boneheaded throws that you've seen throughout his career. He likes to take his shots downfield, but every once in a while there's a head scratcher. So in nine, in the last nine games, five of them have been multi-interception game. And in this league, yeah, you can get all the big play chunks that you want, but you cannot turn the ball over as much as he has lately. So I think it's going to be really fascinating to see what Sean McVay does. I think the first one will be the hardest. This one probably has the most pressure on the Rams. If you can get this one off your shoulders, it's like, oh, you can breathe a sigh of relief. But, man, all eyes are going to be on Matthew Stafford expecting a big performance. So I wouldn't hate to see McVay take it off of his shoulders early and try to establish a run game. By far the most passing yards for a quarterback without a playoff win. That was the big move in the offseason. And then, of course, Jocena, they made moves during the regular season to go for this championship. I mean, th this is the moment for guys like Von Miller and Odell Beckham Jr. to, to show this is why the Rams went and got me. W what do you – hearing about what Odell Beckham is going to factor into the game plan tonight. 
Well, I talked to Odell on Friday, and he said that he had his best practice ever since he's been with the Rams. He said in that practice, because I said, why is that, right? And he said, because I've been catching everything. I think they clocked him at 22.4 miles per hour in practice, and he just said to me that he feels like it's his time. And the other thing that he's hoping for tonight is just to get more involved. In that game last week against the 49ers, he had two targets the entire game. And then they didn't go back to him until overtime when he had three targets in that series that I mentioned before where Matthew Stafford had six plays, four of them incompletions, three of them to Odell. None of them was caught. And obviously that last one was the interception that was caught by Ambry Thomas. So I've been covering Odell since he was with the Giants. And one thing that you know about him is that he has to get involved early and often so he maintains that rhythm. Anybody who's watching him who knows that. So when you saw that stretch go by, you're a little bit concerned. So today you're asking me what do we expect? We expect him to be more involved. He wants to contribute to the offense. After that loss against the 49ers, he sat in the locker room, didn't move because he said to me, Joe, I don't want to feel like I was the cause of losing that game. So he's hoping today that he'll be called upon more and that also in those instances that he can deliver. Well, I think that's a favorable matchup for the Rams, too, working against Marco Wilson. You know, Byron Murphy is probably the best cornerback for the Arizona Cardinals secondary. Uh, and so maybe you want to take your shots when they get those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. But, you know, to get him involved early, that then takes away a target or throw from Cooper Cup, who's been phenomenal this season, as reliable it gets as far as wide receivers go in the NFL. So I really think this comes down to a couple of things. You know, one of the things DK just talked about, taking pressure off Matthew Stafford by running the football, trying to get Cam Akers more touches in there. He can be dynamic, depending on where he feels like his health at and, what's, and what kind of pitch count he's on right now. And then how they go about taking away Cooper Cup. You know, if they go about bracketing him, if they're trying to match him depending on when they want to play man-to-man, -man, that's where I think you're going to see them take some sh shots to Odell Beckham, depending on the matchup in particular with, with Marco Wilson on the outside, when they get those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. But, uh, again, Cooper Cup is where this passing game starts and end ends with, with as reliable as he's been and clearly the chemistry that Matt Stafford already has with him, Danny. No doubt. I mean, the Von Miller move, uh, yet to really see the dividends pay off, but I think you've seen dividends pay off early for the Odell Beckham uh, move. He's come in, he's given better matchups. He had the three straight games with a touchdown pass. And to me, it is about the matchups and kind of opening up some space for this offense to work, and specifically Cooper Cup, who's still been phenomenal. But then you put Odell Beckham out there, and all of a sudden it's a little bit harder to you know, keep a safety over the top to help with Cooper Cup. And then you start thinking about, all right, what is our, what are we going to do with our lead corner, our best man-to-man -man matchup? Are we going to try to change anything up there? And then as a quarterback, Matthew Stafford can pick those matchups that he likes best. So you know, if it's Cooper Cup against the best defensive back and you don't favor it, you're like, all right, it's not a bad option to go to the other side, Odell Beckham, too. So I think this move was really smart by Les Need. I think it's paid off. I think jo uh, Josina makes a great point about keeping him invested early in this game, getting him some touches, and maybe some of those are simple catches, just underneath passes that can turn into big ones, and they're confidence boosters for Matthew Stafford and the whole offense when he touches the ball. And Josina on the other side for the Rams, Eric Weddle, after two years and three weeks in retirement, returning to the football field tonight or at least returning to uniform how much is he actually going to factor into what the Rams do on defense though well I spoke to Rams defensive coordinator Raheem Morris and he uh, reiterate, reiterated to me what he said to the media which is that he called Eric Weddle and basically asked him if he was fat and out of shape and Eric Weddle laughed and said no he's not and Clearly, they feel like he can contribute, and they need him to do that with the injury to Jordan Fuller, uh, the safety, uh, obviously out for the season with that knee injury, and then also with uh, Taylor Rapp being out with the concussion. So they need the help in the secondary. And then I also asked him, well, what exactly is Eric Weddle going to be called to do? What is the utilization? And they said, we're not going to ask him to come out here and play a full game, 60 or 70 plays. We're going to try to put him in positions to be uh, successful, uh, to communicate, to use his vision, to use his technique, and to help us where he definitely can. So Eric Weddle is going to be there to add some um, you know, additional resources in the secondary, and they're just going to continue to watch him as the game progresses. Obviously, he used to be a member of the Rams, has some familiarity with what they're doing here, um, but not going to be called on to go guns blazing as if he was here um, from week one. You're going to be called on a lot more tonight, though, for us here on CBS Sports HQ. Josina Anderson. <laughs>
covering the Rams and Cardinals, the final game of Super Wild Card Weekend for us on HQ. Much more from Josina coming up on the 6 o'clock Eastern Time edition of HQ, powered by Sportsline. Not only report from Josina tonight, but a bunch of best bets and props and DFS advice, futures as well. It's available weeknights at 6 and on the go on your phone. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.